I'm Jessica and I'm vlogging. <laughs> to discuss the fourth book that I have read this year. It is called Switching Time by Richard Bear. This is not a horribly popular book. Uh, I haven't seen many people talk about it. I just happened to cross it on Pinterest. So I wanted to start off with a brief synopsis. This book is about a woman named Karen who lives with multiple personality disorder. And if you look in the little inside flappy bit, it says, this is the first complete account of such therapy to be told from the perspective of the treating physician, a stunningly devoted healer who worked selflessly for decades so that Karen could live as a single human being. So when I picked up this book, I was mostly interested in the diagnosis and kind of the science behind why multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder, as it is actually known, comes on in a person. So in my very brief psych studying career, which accounted for like all of two classes, I was taught that multiple personality disorder is not a thing. And in popular media, it's also kind of depicted as not an actual thing. So what I wanted from this book was how it happens, what it is, why it happens, how diagnosis works really, and then how treatment works uh, you know, hopefully with lots of citations. However, the main problem with this book is that it answers none of those questions, which is awesome. This leads the book to actually read, like, fiction and not a true story. That's not what the doctor ordered. That was my major issue with it. Um, there were several other smaller issues. First being the doctor's attitude in general. Uh, you will read on the very front of this, it is a doctor's harrowing story of treating this woman. It wasn't harrowing for the doctor. I could see how living with this and dealing with what this woman dealt with in her childhood and her adult life too would be harrowing. The doctor, however, lived a nice cushy life in Chicago with a private practice. So I'm not entirely sure how this was harrowing for him. The second problem is that the doctor immediately endears himself to you by telling you that it is really hard to treat people with depression because it really bums them out. That's exactly what we want psychiatrists to think. And the spread of misconceptions on people with depression burdening their psychiatrist. That's awesome. Let's spread that some more. So he immediately decides that Karen is just too pathetic to treat and kind of writes her off. He also talks about there not being a lot of doctors who have treated multiple personality disorder because of its rarity. And throughout the book, he seems much more interested in how this is going to distinguish him as a doctor and less about getting her proper treatment with maybe somebody who has dealt with this before or even consulting somebody who had treated her or treated multiple personality disorder before. He basically just kind of goes in guns blazing. He admits throughout the book that he doesn't know what he's doing. As I said before, I was really looking for something that talked about what multiple personality disorder was and how it was diagnosed. He never talks about how he diagnosed her, simply that, oh yeah, I thought she probably had it for a while. Now you will notice that I'm calling it multiple personality disorder and not dissociative identity disorder because that is what he diagnosed her with, multiple personality disorder. He states in the first couple paragraphs of figuring out that she has this, that he likes that term better, even though that has been decided that that is not the appropriate term because somebody does not have multiple personalities. They have compartmentalized different identities inside of them, not different people. This is a one section of their personality that they have dissociated, not this is a fully formed person with another fully formed person inside of them. It is a dissociation rather than multiple people. So if we kind of move past the fact that this doctor appears to be kind of an asshole, the book is simply not well written. It is incredibly repetitive. We start the healing process of hypnosis and that general thing uh, very early on, about halfway through the book. We then spend the next half of the book talking about each individual alter and how they joined with Karen, which would be interesting if it was a different story each time, but it's not. It's the same story written exactly the same way where he basically opens a door, has the alter come in, sit on Karen's lap, and that is literally the end of it. But it takes up half of the book 
And if this was an interesting commentary on how, like, the psychological mind reabsorbed part of the identity, that would be fine. But it's not. It's literally written as she comes in, sits on Karen, she talks about being sensitive to light and sound, um, she gets headaches, and then she's remembering stories this altar has taken on to relieve the burden from Karen. It's not interesting, it's not informative, it's simply repetitive. Along with half of the book simply being the same story told over and over and over just with different names, the writing is actually quite sloppy. There are times where she has already been put under hypnosis like two paragraphs ago, but then he talks about putting her into the trance. It's very confusing because he wouldn't have been able to talk to the altar he was talking to if she wasn't already under hypnosis. He also likes the word suddenly. He says suddenly she did this and then suddenly she did this and suddenly he says that like four times a paragraph. Like I stated before, this book reads very much like fiction and not non-fiction. One of the reasons for this is he asks us to suspend disbelief a lot more than you should in a non-fiction book. The major treatment for Karen, and apparently for most people with dissociative identity disorder, is hypnosis. However, he doesn't give any explanation as to why this works, uh, how somebody will go about hypnotizing someone else, or like, who else has tried hypnosis with any sort of success. He also states that he isn't actually very knowledgeable in hypnosis. He has a very general idea of how to do it and it magically works the first time with like no trouble at all. And unfortunately, I find this really hard to believe. He has done it such an injustice in showing that we don't know why this worked or how it worked or even how he managed to diagnose it. On Goodreads, I actually rated this book a four out of five and you might be wondering why. And that's because I will not give somebody a two-star review on a medical book where this person could be real. It's not her fault that he wrote a crappy book. There's like a really bizarre link to like her hypnosis and she's suddenly cured at the very end. He like joins the last altar and all of a sudden she's just great. And like two years after that, she doesn't need therapy anymore. Despite just having this sudden influx of horrible child abuse memories, she doesn't need to work through them at all because her alters have all done that already. I find that hard to believe that somebody who has just had a crazy surge of child abuse memories and domestic abuse memories will suddenly just be okay. The book pumps up the doctor's involvement quite a bit by saying that he is a stunningly devoted and selfless hero who worked for decades. He worked for a decade and some change. He did not work for decades with this woman. So one of my goals this year was to read five non-fiction books. One down. A lot of this book seemed to be him trying to capitalize on really gruesome depictions of child abuse, which I am not so much into. I was really hoping to find a book about this disorder. If anybody has any recommendations, for stories that maybe don't capitalize so much on gruesome aspects of abuse. I would not recommend this book to anybody, unless for some reason you really want graphic depictions of child abuse. So that has been my kind of rant review of Switching Time by Richard Bear. I think there are probably much better books about psychological diseases. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is like all of Oliver Sacks' work. If you want to read something psychological, read something by him because he does a much better job. So that is my vlog for today. I hope you enjoyed it somewhat. Um, I'm thinking about doing more book talky videos. Not, I don't hate all the books I read. I very, very rarely actually come across a book that I hate. So I'm hoping to incorporate more of those into the channel. And I will see you next time. Bye! Oh my god. Yeah. Nailed it. The video stopped recording automatically as I reached for it.